Alrighty, let's look at this last example for the section. Uh, we have to graph 3x is less than 6 minus 6y. So here, unlike the previous example, uh, where we found the x and the y intercept, I'm actually going to graph it slightly differently, just so you see another flavor of how you can graph a line, and for the purposes of review, really. So let's say we try to convert this to slope intercept form, and then use rise over run from the y intercept to graph it. So the first thing, as we've done in the previous example, is rewrite this as an equation. So we get 3x is equal to 6 minus 6y. And then in order to get this in slope-intercept form, we have to get y by itself. So I currently see that the y is attached to a negative 6. So if I move the negative 6y to the left-hand side, it's going to become positive. So let's start and do that. We would get 6y plus 3x equals 6. Now again, remember that the goal is to get y by itself, so now we need to get rid of the 3x. Since the 3x is being added on the left-hand side, we can subtract it over. So we would get 6y equals negative 3x plus 6, and hopefully this is starting to look somewhat like slope-intercept form. Not exactly yet, but close, close enough. Now in order to solve for y, we need to divide by the 6 on each of the terms, so we can do that. And if we do, we would 6y over 6 would just be y equals negative 3 over 6 would be negative 1 half plus 6 over 6 would just be 1. Now again, here, if you remember, this is the y-intercept. This is where the line crosses the y-axis. And then this is the slope, negative 1 half. So if we were to use that those two pieces of information to graph our straight line, we can start as we did in the previous sections, at 1, which is our y-intercept, and then use the slope, or use the rise over run, to plot the second point. So if we start at 1, we know that the slope is negative 1 half. So that means we need to go down by one unit, so then we're at the origin, and then to the right by 2. So the second point would be right there. So the first point is at 0, 1, that's the y-intercept, and then the second point is at um, 2 comma 0, which actually ends up being the x-intercept. So had we found the intercepts, these are the two points that we would have found. But hopefully you see just another pathway on how you can graph straight lines. Now we look back at the original inequality, we have a less than, not less than or equal to. So we need to make this a dotted line. So it looks something like this. And now we can see that there, this line has split up the region, uh, the coordinate plane into two regions, up and to the right, which is this region, or down and to the left, or below the line or above the line, however you want to phrase that. So we want to pick a test point and then run towards the truth or away from a lie. And as we've said before, if you can pick the origin, you always should because it makes computations a little bit easier. So let's say my test point is 0, 0. The line does not pass through the origin, so I can use that as my test point. And we plug that into the original inequality. 3x is less than 6 minus 6y. If we do that, all we're doing is replacing the x's and the y's with the coordinates that we just picked. So 3 times 0 is less than 6 minus 6 times 0. 3 times 0 is just 0. Is less than 6 minus 6 times 0 is 0. 6 minus 0 is 6, so we get 0 is less than 6. You want to ask yourself, is that a true statement or is that a false statement? Which would you rather have, $0 or $6? $6, so that's obviously greater, and therefore this is a true statement. So the point 0, 0 was telling us the truth, so we want to shade on the side of 0, 0, which means that this entire region contains all the solutions to that inequality. In other words, had you picked any other point besides 0, 0, had we picked, say, negative 3, 0, or negative 3, negative 3, which would maybe be down there, all those points would satisfy this inequality, which is to say that if you had plugged those points in, you would get a true statement at the end. Let's look at this in Desmos for maybe a proper graph. So here, we had done the first one already. If we turn on the second one, we see pretty much the same exact graph as we had drawn by hand. So we see this line that was starting at 
This was one and this was two. And if we go back to the graph, you can see here that this is the point zero one, that was our y-intercept. And then we went down by one and over by two to get the second point, and it also ended up being our x-intercept. And you can see that the line is dashed or dotted, indicating that the points on the line itself are not going to be solutions. The solution set or the solutions lie to the left and below the line. So all the points in this region, if you were to plug them into this inequality, you're going to get a true statement. But if we had plugged in say two comma four, which is this point here, that would yield a false statement. So had that point been our test point, we would have run away from it and shaded on the other side of the line. Hopefully that helps. We'll see you in the next section.